Freedom. Travel. Escape. A mobile living room. It's rock and roll. It's beers. It's vanity. For the last three years, Van enthusiasts from around North America have come together in Equity, Alberta for three days of van-fueled chaos. Vantopia is more than just a party. It's a gathering of like-minded individuals who share an affinity and passion for custom vans. It's a chance for them to share their experiences and tales from the road and make new lasting memories that enrich this unique subculture. From the junkyard to the shop and onto the road, it's an evolution. A transformation occurs not just to the van, but to the owners as well. A bond is formed and through breakdowns and rebuilds, vanners will stand by their vans. I'm Arlen Smith. Uh, this is Corey Martin. Oh, I'm Corey. This is Corey. Uh, van is just, it's a van club. It's, you know, we started it three years ago. Three and a half yeah. years ago. Well, this is Vantopia three. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was before that. I guess so we started three. almost four years ago. January. And, uh, you know, it's just it's a bunch of, bunch of friends that have known each other for a long time that, that just have basically to have vans. like vans and enjoy throwing parties. Oh shit, me and Corey met like initially, years. we probably known each other for 20 yeah. some years. Yeah, back in Red Deer days <clears throat> and he was in Sylvan. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just we all kind of we all kind of grew up around that time and in the same region basically and uh, um, yeah and we and then we sort of we reconnected me and Corey reconnected four years ago because Corey had just gotten his new van and I had just bought my van and it just sort of came up in conversation and uh, yeah yeah Corey Corey's like dude I bought a Fucking sweet 76 Chevy. I was like, no way. I just bought a 67 Econoline, man. And based, like, it came out, like, at the same time. We should start a van club. Yeah, there's got to be more of us somewhere, man. <clears throat> and, you know, that was, that was, it was born then. And we are like, yeah, let's do this. Let's, we know lots of bros with vans. Like, let's yeah. get this together and, you know. And that was easy because we knew, like, like Arlen, Arlen, Arlen runs a, the uh, Palomino with, there's touring bands and local bands all every night at his club, just about. You know, and, and all and of a sudden we've got like yeah, every band's got a van. So. Danny Vacon is in the club and Trenton's in the club and all these band guys that are like fuck yeah, like I like I like vans. We have a fucking kick-ass tour van, man. I want to be in the club, or you know? whatever. And and it wasn't even that. It wasn't even no one asked to be in the club. We didn't ask them to be in the club. It was just uh, that just thing. sort of natural, yeah. man. Like yeah. just dudes hanging out and. Oh, well, like, how do I join the club? And it's like, well, we like each other, so you can yeah, join the club, up, man. man. Like, like it's, a, it's pretty lots simple. Of lots of the members we have are just no-brainers, just because just they've been brought <clears throat> for so long anyways. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> it's a no-brainer. But uh, we don't really put it out there to, <clears throat> to, like, invite people to join and get a whole bunch of randos, because it's not our style. So this is pure brotherhood. Well, I mean, vans are badass. Where else can you fucking sleep after you spend a night at the bar? You can't sleep in a fucking or Toyota. A party on the That's street. fucking bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah, vanning was just a natural thing for. I played in bands for years and years, and that was the. I mean, you can't you can't tour in a, in a band without a van, right? So that's the. Um, that's what really opened my eyes to cool stuff you can do in a van. You know, driving a van, how your van looks. My first van, I guess I got. Would have been 1997. I got a 1972 Dodge Tradesman camper van, orange and white, which is sort of why the new van is orange and white. It's a it's a tribute to the fucking punk and guts, the old camper van I had. And I mean, I just got it because you know sometimes you just gotta bail. You know, you need to get out of Dodge for three weeks, and you know, 
you're younger, so do not stay at the fucking Hilton for three weeks. You fucking get in a van and just fucking drive, man. Like, <clears throat> it's, it's what it's all about, so. I'm David Matchstick Brooks, uh, Bluegrass Vanners, Louisville, Kentucky, 27 years old, publisher of Custom Vanner Magazine. I mean, ever since I was a kid, Dad took us to car shows from Louisville, Kentucky, and so we have the Street Rod Nationals there, and we'd always go to that, and uh, Carl Casper's Custom Auto Show, and you know, then start playing in bands, and you gotta go on tour, and you gotta get a van to go on tour, you know, and that just, once I got a van, I mean, I grew up around hot rods. I wanted to put wheels on it. I wanted to put headers on it. You know, I wanted it to be my hot rod. And uh, gave up on playing in a band. It's way easier to go vanning, you know. You gotta haul a little bit of equipment. You know you're not gonna get paid from the get-go. And uh, you at least know where you're staying every night. Uh, I have two vans. I have a 88 Chevrolet Astro as my daily driver. It's a factory five-speed van. It's a short length body. Um, gets 20 and a half miles to the gallon. You know, predictably, all the time. It's it's uh, it's an early throttle body injection motor. It's great. It's reliable. It's easy to get parts for. Uh, you know, I've driven this one across the country four times now, and I bought it for six hundred dollars in an auction. It's my daily driver. I, I love it. You know, I've got a full interior in it, and it's comfortable. And then uh, I got a '67 Econoline. Uh, it's called a Super Van. Has an extended butt. Um, they they didn't make different wheelbases, but they would add on a different back section to make it longer. And uh, that's, that's what I have. They're kind of freaky looking and people aren't real big on them. They, 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 butt vans, that's what we call them. But I like mine. It's weird, it's unique, and uh, you know, it's grown on me a lot over the years. Uh, yeah, I did a, a photo book. It was called Along the Way, I Lost My Way. And uh, there's pictures of my travels from around 2012. And at that time, I had moved to Western Kentucky to work at a street rod shop. And uh, I was living in a bus. I was living in a 48 flexible clipper bus and it had been an old recording truck for the King Biscuit Blues Flower Hour. And so it, you know, it had gear in it, so it had you know, 50 amp 110 service into it. Over my bed were where the old EQ racks used to be. It was a really neat thing to live in, in general, and I drove it a little bit, which was really hairy, you know, because it was just a straight axle, and I only drove it maybe like the 15 miles to park it where I was living. Uh, so I took a lot of time to, to visit places, and I was driving a lot, so I'd go through like where the Everly Brothers were from, you know, like in the John Prine song, you know, where the paradise lays, the river. Uh, that was in central Kentucky. So I'd check that stuff out and just take my time, you know, because I was, I was just driving around a lot to uh, fill the blanks in. And so I just took photos everywhere I went. That's what it's all about, getting in your van and leaving. And I don't think really the, the state of affairs and the temperature of things really matters that much. Either way, if you want to get out and go and be by yourself, you're going to do that regardless of what the setting really is. It's all perception, but uh, I'd enjoy any of the places, but I love the Midwest. I love vanning in the Midwest. Uh, there's a lot of clubs that have been around for a long time, and they're great people, and so I, I don't think I'd really trade that for anything, even though I'm, I'm moving west now and, and uh, met a lot of vanners in uh, California, and I knew some of them already, and they're great people and having a good time. Looking forward to the new landscape, but uh, I don't know, I guess just uh, four wheels in the road, I'm on board. I was a young carpenter. Um, I guess I was probably 19 at the time. And uh, I could buy a van and I could use it for work, but I could also use it for play. It was like having a classic car that you could do some real stuff with. I was into snowmobiles, so I could haul my snowmobiles around with it. It was just, it was the vehicle that would do everything. One of my favorite names for a van club was called California Rolling Living Rooms. That's what I have here, is a rolling living room. You know, one, one of the things about vans is your originality, for sure. Making it your own. So I was... 
a little arrogant in my youth and I grumbled and, and, and muttered with swear words saying that I was going to build something so effing nuts that nobody would have the balls to copy it. So okay, I guess that's why this is so crazy, but it was again because of practicality. Uh, I mean, I lived in a, in a utopian time and, and um, there's nothing wrong with what you've got going on here. Uh, um, it, it's, it's pretty good, I like it. I'm, I'm just so thrilled that I could get to come to a few of these again because I thought it was gone. My name is my name is Dino, Dino Robertson, and I'm uh, I'm a member of the Vandits. Yeah, proud member. I got involved uh, last year at Vantopia. Actually, came out, pitched a tent. Thought to myself, this is the last time I'm sleeping on the hard ground, man. I'm buying a van. I went on some epic adventures. I put on more miles on my van than most people will in years, in less than a year. So I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. I went uh, test running around the hills of Alberta and the foothills, cruising around. I went to a powwow. I slept wherever I wanted. It was like, this is for me. I like, I like a vacation with no, no plan. I like just like, hey, I'm feeling it here. Let's stay here tonight. The van is perfect for you then. I was drawn to Van Toby because of the bands and the music, the scene. All my friends are uh, talented musicians, many of which are in the Vandits. We have uh, Darty from Cron Goblin and Trenton from Man Cub and you know Corey who plays a bunch of bands and uh, also Danny from the High Kicks. So naturally the, the rocker in me drew me to Vantopia. Yeah, I do a lot of uh, vanning uh, kind of artwork for the club make the t-shirts or you know draw the posters for the club and uh, I do a lot of gig posters as well for local bands or design t-shirt logos and things like that so it all seemed to integrate you know our, uh, the vanning lifestyle with the tattoo lifestyle and uh, you know my mechanic background it just made sense that I should be a vanner. I owned a couple of motorcycles and since I bought a van I haven't rode them and it's I'm a little bit ashamed, but uh, you know, people say, hey man, have you been on your bike lately? And I said, nah, I'm a vanner now. Like, sorry man, like I pretty much retired my bike and I'm a vanner now. My name is uh, Donnie Gillies. Uh, my art name is Dirty Donnie. Yeah, I'm uh, Dirty Danny. I live in a parallel universe from Dirty Donnie. I make money off of him and I give him royalty. <laughs> no, but my real name is Ben and I do nothing. So, our, our friend Jay Cruz started the uh, Vandaleros. Um, that is, it's a five year anniversary, I think, right around now. Um, yeah. Club's been around for five years. Um, um, our buddy Jay Cruz, we all like mutual friends and started a van club and 
Um, I mean, it was it was kind of a, a weird deal um, where like we were all kind of friends already and in, in another life like and then when we started the Vandaleros, we just fucking all just became like cosmically fucking sound and. and yeah, we all, we all have vans in common, but yeah. it's also I mean our club is more about like I mean friendship just comes first, you know we're like best friends and then. We've got our bands too, so it's just you know, it's common, together, we man. have common interests too. We all kind of come from like you know, sort of a punk rock, rock and roll kind of kind of deal, and you know, worked uh, worked out really good. So rolling down the highway, <laughs> like rolling down the highway with with tunes blasting, it's pretty awesome. You know, you got your van, and I don't know, it's a good feeling, you know. I mean, I, it just to me like vans were just like another another outlet that hadn't been explored, and like our I think our like like the Vandaleros, I think all in general on the same on the same key where it's just like you know what like. This has been forgotten. Like vanning has been like a culture, like a subculture that has been like fucking swept under the rug. We have everything in California. We have like all the yards. We have like we're three. Yeah, we're sort of spoiled. You're right kind of spoiled. Like, yeah, the weather's so good. Like everybody low rides all fucking year round. Everybody yeah, rides their bikes should, all year yeah. round. Like yeah. you know, it's we're kind of spoiled like that. But it doesn't take a trip like this to like actually tell you like oh fuck like these guys are fucking doing it because they're doing it with what they can. Like we just kind of spoiled. We just like fucking. Whatever, like, oh shit, my dad has a 75 like laying in his fucking garage. Like, see what's up with that, like, you know? Yeah. Um, it's rad. It's it's really good to see the perspective and like to see a, you know everybody fucking. It's hard in Canada it, too because um, a lot of the you know a lot of cars rust because you know winter uh, salt the roads and I mean my old cars like all the shit I've owned I've always rotted from the bottom up and it's just it's harder to find them like I'm sure at the junkyards like they were they were probably at the junkyards you know 15 years ago because they were rotted out just rust pigs you know. And uh, California, it's not the case, you know, and, and people are dumping vans right now, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, man, um, I, I grew up in Ottawa, um, lived in Montreal for a few years, and then I moved to California about 14 years ago. Uh, I do art full time. Uh, I do automotive paint, I do design. Um, I paint, uh, canvas, uh, make posters, uh, you know, work on products and stuff, and uh, my art took me to California. I grew up with not a lot of car culture. It just wasn't really around in Ottawa. I mean, it was there, but not like it is in LA and California. Um, my dad and my uncle both had vans when I was a little kid in the 70s. And uh, I was always like super like, wow, cool. They got them painted and you know, it's just so, so neat. And uh, when my dad sold the van, I was like a little kid. I was crying, oh, I sold the van. You know, and got a station wagon, oh, you know, broke my heart. You know, we're, we're a fucking brotherhood and we all like, we're fucking like-minded and like we all have like, you know the same kind of theory on life and like fuck man we can we can all go out and get it like i think everything's pretty much available for us if you want it and just fucking do it like and we're all when you're on that level with like your brother it's just like fuck yeah dude let's do this like let's build this or let's fucking do this it's fucking amazing yeah between all of us yeah. um with our different talents you yeah. know we can, we can you know we just pass stuff around and yeah and that's that's kind know, of I like paint you know jay yeah. does posters and, and does like designs and t-shirts and he's done a lot of graphics for the club and Ben does the hide a chug and all this, you know, it's just yeah. it's beautiful, like metal work and, you know, and, and dude can build anything, you know, it's like, and all yeah, the guys, all the guys in the club, they all do cool shit, you know, it's just good, you know, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. You get inspired. Like if you're feeling down, like you're feeling fucking shitty and like, you just like, cause we always on this mass text to each other and we're always texting naked pictures of my balls and shit, but we're on this mass text. So like, if you, if you feel like uninspired, man, you just fucking, man, you just like fucking call your bro, hey dude, like I got this idea. I'm like, fuck yeah, man, let's do this shit. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. We're, we're able to get like, like if we, yeah. you know, pretty much do anything, you know. Like between all of us, we can, you know, yeah. make, shit, make shit happen, you know. Yeah, totally. So. I don't feel like there's anything that can stop us, like. This is Matt Ola. He's, uh, he don't call him a country artist. He hates it. He is a, a rock and roll star from Calgary. He plays in cat in puncher. And you're you're Danny Vicon. I, I can talk for myself, Matt. But you don't like being called Dan or something, though. No. Yeah, I'd like to go with Danny. I used to be Dan. Are you but a grown man though? Like. Yeah. No. No. Not at all. It's a weird thing. To but think. brevity is like. Putting a vowel on the end of your name. So nineties. Matt. 
Ola. Why don't you go with Matthew? Be proud of yourself. It's too many. Anyway, we're here to talk about vans. Uh, What's your van like, Matt? It's uh, rotting in my backyard. I uh, brought it out to the first uh, Vantopia and it died on the way back. And I towed it back to my backyard where it's sat ever since. And uh, I recently caught a homeless man living in it. And I chased him out of it with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, I didn't want him in my rotting van. Because everybody's got to pay their dues. <laughs> fuck. Uh, I'll tell you a van story. I have a. I have is, a, a long, is it a long story? Oh fuck yeah. No, I'll I'll uh, I'll cut the fat. Check this out. This happened this week. Uh, so I bought this van off this old dude who was like customizing it, and then at some point he's just like, you know what? This is bullshit. I'm fucking old. Like I should be doing cool old man stuff. Like not Trains. working on cars anymore yeah. and vans. Like I'm gonna pass this off to this young bearded fellow. And so I bought this dude's van and You consider yourself young. Yeah. Look at um, your beard. Look how many gray hairs you have. <laughs> That's You it, are also old. You're no, it's the came it started gray and as I get ratter it gets browner <laughs> all the time. True story. Um, but here's what happened. I fucking took my van in this week to uh, these mechanics and I called ahead and I'm like, you guys do wiring, because this is, I'm gonna warn you, it's a bit of a wiring nightmare. This guy's kind of a Frankenstein genius like guy. And he's like, don't worry, we do everything. We got this. Dropped it off. He calls me an hour later, he's like, I don't know what the fuck this, what, what's going on? I don't know anything about this. It's not even, this is, this is, he was on a landline, I'm pretty sure too. <laughs> this is not even real. Anyway. I, so uh, this is what he said to me, no shit. He said, as, m as many man hours as it would take to get the wiring proper in this van, you could buy a truck, man. I was like, what the, f what the fuck did you, s what do you, what the fuck does that have to do anything, man? Yeah, I could buy a truck, I could buy a fucking box of jeans, <laughs> I could take my mom to Vegas, like, <laughs> I could do a whole lot of shit. What does, are you gonna fix my van or what? Uh, I'm gonna get it. I'm. I finally decided to give up on the dream of my my dead RV van in the backyard. I'm. I'm gonna get. Uh, Your what dream van would you rent? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get get another uh, conversion van, like kind of like what you got going on. You got, yeah. a, you got a nice van. Honestly, and they suit you, man. Like everyone. This is this is a fact, true story. Everyone who isn't shitty should have a van. <laughs> One, not because like. Not because the world like needs it from you, but you deserve it, is, is how I feel. Yeah, we all deserve nice things, you especially for what we've done to the, for the world. For the world, right? Yeah. You know you're gonna die before me, and probably soon. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. And, and you, the, with the short amount of time you have left, you should be vanning, man. Are you, threatening, going, are you threatening me? I'm warning are you, you <laughs> about the imminent fucking Is this because I slept with your ex-girlfriend? <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a kind of a free guy, and vanning does really make you feel free. You, you know, you don't necessarily need to have a campground booked. You don't need to have a hotel booked. You just go until you find something you like, and if you love it, you stay there the night. And uh, it's very freeing, you know, like, it's different. I don't know, you're, you're, you don't have a care in the world in a van. You go a little slower, you roll a little heavier. You're not, a, you're not in a race in a van, you know? You're just like, you get where you get as far as you get, and then if you love it, you stay there. If you don't like it, you keep going. This is, uh, I like to think that we throw a pretty good truck in, man. Like, you know, we've got 34 vans out there this year. The music's awesome. The, we the weather's good, the beer's cold. Uh -huh. People are having fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there are clubs that don't party, but they're probably not fun. Those are the 98 percenters. <laughs> that's, that's the 98 percenters, you know? Yeah. Screw those guys, I don't wanna drink fucking milk in my van on a fucking hot Sunday afternoon. That's, right. that's bullshit.